Hi everyone, I've been building big brake kits since 2003 for Pontiacs and Chevys. If you would like a big brake kit for your PPV, your G8, your Pontiac GTO, or your Chevy SS, go to g8brakes.com. What is going on everybody? I appreciate you checking out Dave's World. So. A question I get asked all the time is why are there so many different cars on your channel? Aside from me loving all cars, one of my favorite companies that have ever made cars in my life are Holden's. So when you come to my channel, you're always going to find a mix of the Chevy Cruze, the Pontiac G8, the Chevy SS, the uh, Pontiac GTO, and the Shelby Cobra because, you know, hashtag dream car. Here's something that the average person would not know. That's a Holden Commodore. That's a Holden Commodore. That's a Holden Cruise. That's a Holden Cruise. That's a Holden Minara. That's a Holden Commodore. Now, all of a sudden, all of these different cars make sense. They all originated in Australia, built by a company called Holden, which is basically General Motors of Australia. It's an amazing company. Their cars are amazing, and I'm a massive fan. Not only am I a massive fan of Holden, I'm also a massive fan of big brakes. I have a website, g8brakes.com. I also have a website, supercruises.com. It doesn't make sense why it's two completely different things until you realize both of those vehicles are made by Holden and I'm a massive fan. Not only that, I make big brakes for a lot of different Holdens, including the GTO. Now all of a sudden, supercruises.com and g8brakes.com make sense. First of all, it's all the cars I'm into. Second of all, it's made by a company I absolutely adore that I wish never shut its doors. And third of all, I just love doing it. It's my hobby. There's a reason you can get performance parts for a Chevy Cruze and a G8 on my website. I live in that world because I love that world. So what are we doing? I'm in the process of putting a Petters coilover suspension onto this 2009 GTO. This GTO was converted back to a Holden Commodore. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a 2009 G8. I wonder how many people are commenting that I was wrong before they even saw this next scene. In throughout the process, it's had bad swapping, bumper swapping, the steering wheel has been swapped, the interior has been changed over but it still has the original factory brakes. So I decided to help Mike, the owner, with the brake side of things because this is my world, basically. Uh, so we're gonna be upgrading his crappy factory brakes. I mean, these are 20 inch wheels and you can see how minuscule and tiny these uh, brakes are. I've done braking tests on these cars and you'll see this specific car, how long it takes for the factory brakes to stop the car and then how long it takes for my g8brakes.com brakes to stop the car huge difference so the owner of this car was pretty much on a budget and based on his budget what i was able to do was basically refurbish some trade-in calipers i received he wanted them black with holding on them uh this kit comes with my high carbon rotors a ceramic blend pad the reason i use the ceramic blend is it helps cut down on noise uh grade 10.9 mounting bolts uh grade 10.9 slide pins and stainless steel springs. Uh, it's a pretty nice kit. The only thing that's not pictured is I also do stainless steel braided brake lines, but his brake lines were okay on the car. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw these on the car and then we're gonna go test the new braking system on this car. So I could show you guys how these braking systems perform. So when you spend the money on your brake system, you pretty much know it was money well spent. By the way, in case you're wondering what this weird color is inside the calipers, make sure you lubricate your calipers. This is one of the things a lot of people who switch over to big brakes do not do. They don't lubricate their brakes, so what ends up happening is the pads end up basically getting stuck over time because of debris getting behind the pads, and then what happens is because there's no lubrication, the pads sort of wear funny and then they start making noise. Make sure you always lubricate the pins and the pistons and basically anywhere the pad contacts so you don't get any corrosion and you don't get any weird binding.
Okay, so originally when I started this video, I stated that I wasn't gonna change the brake lines because they look pretty good. That is true, the line does look good. What doesn't look good is the bracket for the line, the actual fitting that seals the line to the metal lines or the hard lines, the curved part and the actual crimped section of the lines. I'm not happy with it because the other day when I checked, it was kind of dark and I checked the rubber and I'm like, oh, the rubber looks good. Didn't realize this part was a problem. So. What I'm gonna be doing is replacing this bracket with a brand new one. And then I'm gonna be adding some stainless steel braided lines in. So the stainless steel braided lines come with brand new bushings. So these metal bushings are changed over to like a billet aluminum. Uh, it comes with the bracket right here, which is also billet aluminum or maybe stainless steel. It comes with new crush washers, new banjo bolts for the calipers. I just wanna let you guys know that I'm gonna be doing that and always check these parts if you're ever doing a big break upgrade. I was trying to save Mike some money by not changing these lines, but I realized that if I don't do something about this, this could rot and break off over time. And we definitely do not want this hard line breaking because you will lose your brakes if fluid comes out of here. All right, so the brand new stainless steel braided brake line is in. The mounting bracket is in. I just had to put the little clip to hold it in place. The, uh, the lines attached to the caliper. We have our ceramic pads, our high carbon rotors. Pretty much the only thing left to do on this specific brake system is bleed it. I have a bunch of different videos on my YouTube channel showing how to put a complete brake kit in from beginning to end. How to bleed a, a big brake system like a Brembo caliper or any kind of caliper that you might have on your car. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this car up and then the next time you see me, we're gonna be at my testing area. I'm gonna show you the original braking system and how long it takes to actually stop the car from 35 miles an hour. Then I'm gonna show you how long it takes to stop the car with the new braking system from 35 miles an hour. And you're gonna definitely be surprised. Again, comment below as to what you think the stopping distance will be. If you pay attention to when I'm slamming on the brakes on this car and actually look at the nose dive and the body roll, you'll see that I'm pushing these brakes as hard as humanly possible to get this car to stop. Even with pushing the brake pedal with both of my feet as hard as I can all the way to the floor, the car still stopped at only 48 feet. That was the shortest braking distance I could get out of the factory braking system. Okay, first stopping test was 26 feet. Twenty-two feet, that's pretty good. So I hope everyone thinks this video is as cool to watch as it was to make. I really enjoyed it. I want to thank Michael Rosenfeld. He's the owner of this car. Stay tuned to my channel because I'm going to have a playlist basically showing the path we take on this car. It is a 3.6 liter V6 that we're going to supercharge. I have currently installed a Petters suspension on this car, which fits the V8 and the V6. So I have another video coming out showing that. And we're also going to be doing a full exhaust system and a few other upgrades to this car. I thought it would be really cool to show how to get power out of these V6s because I don't think they get a lot of love. And don't worry, I also have V8 content on the channel for the G8 GT. But this is still a fun video series. Hopefully you guys enjoy and have a very nice day. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go, go.